Hey, what's up, folks? Uh, Tuesday, right? Yeah, man, Tuesday. Nice. Let's talk a little sports battle. We got an NBA game tonight. Uh, Clippers Suns. I haven't talked about basketball in a couple days. Obviously, the Suns got the one nothing lead. So I guess the Clippers got them exactly where they want them, right? Yeah, I was literally thinking about that when I was calling you. We have not talked about NBA in a few days. So haven't even congratulated you yet. Congratulations on Monster Win. I mean, man. A great like, game. Yeah, great game. Great win for Milwaukee. Uh, it seems like their path is lined up for them really nice. Uh, biggest thing from for me in the NBA is, man, what a choke job by Philly. I mean, I still cannot believe they lost that series. I will give Atlanta props like because someone had to win the series, but Philly clearly lost it, in my opinion. The Ben Simmons fiasco, I don't even know what to call it at this point besides did that. You, did you see the... It just it just blew up all over social media that like somebody close to the situation texted Stephen A was like, he's lazy, he doesn't work, he doesn't listen to anybody, and I'm like the situation was bad for Ben Simmons, but now that coming out just makes him look even worse. I didn't even hear that, but like, that's that pretty new stuff. Like over the last couple hours. Okay, no, I have not heard that. I haven't really been on that stuff though, so I'm interested to see that. But I obviously take you at your word, and that doesn't come as a shocker. I mean, even during his press conference. He talked about how, you know, what did Trey Young shoot? He had excuses. He was like, what did Trey Young shoot? Uh, I had well, how many assists did I have? He's like, it's hard to win. The Nets got lost to the Bucks. Like, why are you, you – know what I mean? Like, just eat your humble pie right now because you were awful. Uh, and there's no two ways about it. I mean, he was pathetic. If I'm Joel Embiid, I, I don't even know. I, you got to ask for changes there. I'm sure there will be changes there. The whole team, Tobias Harris – like Trey Young has emerged as like a guy that I think you can confidently say like you'd want to build around. I mean, they're in the Eastern Conference Finals for a reason. Not everyone can be Giannis or KD or those guys. Trey Young is clearly that guy. But for me, what a letdown by Philly. The path was so there for them. I mean, yes, I, there's <clears throat> I have nothing to rebut with that. That was the the skipping the wide open dunk. The optics on that, and again, it wasn't as easy of a dunk as people make it out to be, but at six foot nine, six foot ten, with his athleticism, he should have thrown it down. The optics of that are it, even worse than the passing of it. You know what I mean? Definitely. And for me, like, I hadn't sat down and, and like, straight watched a game from the start to finish, like, in a while for that whole series, really. I'd watched some of it. As soon as I sat down and started watch, <clears throat> watching that game, I was like, who is this team? These guys are awful. I was like, Simmons doesn't look like himself. Harris looks so passive. I was like, this team is awful right now. It's Embiid and nothing else. Korkmaz, Curry, and Embiid were like the guys handling the ball in the first quarter. Simmons was he was non-existent. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, rough off season for that young man. But, I mean, I think it was – I forget who I was listening to yesterday. I think it was Colin Cowher. He's like, you know, you say what you want about Giannis's free throw shooting – but the difference between Giannis and Ben Simmons, besides just production and rebounds and scoring, is Giannis is a worker. Like, There's you know you can't get him out of the gym. Simmons, like, just doesn't seem to even want to be there. We've compared their games, and they have comparable games. We've talked about that. And Simmons in the regular season, I mean, he had 40 points against Utah when Rudy Gobert was on him. Like, he can do it, but his game does not translate to the playoffs. Uh, yeah, I mean, now looking back, I feel like an idiot for even thinking that, you know, Hughes Philly shouldn't trade for James Harden, like Ben Simmons for James Harden. Now you look at it like, what are they going to get for Ben Simmons? Like some Penny, pennies on the dollar. Some team will want him because he's better than like what the Cavs have, for instance, or what a lot of teams have. But no team is going to give up like future for him because he's not that guy. Well, think about it this way: he's gone from comparisons of he's Magic Johnson and LeBron James to maybe he could be Draymond. Like Draymond's a nice player. But that is a dip and a half right there, right? You're so right about that. Like that's and that's like a maybe. Like he doesn't have yeah. the intangibles that Draymond has. He has everything else. Like right. He's so good defensively, but man, like he was. I couldn't believe how big of a no show was. The Hawks were just the better team. Yeah, they played with a lot more passion, and the, you know the the hiring of Nate McMillan has been nothing short of sensational for them. He's really changed the culture over there. Uh, it's interesting. So, I mean, let's hop back over to the Suns before we get into individual plays. Suns versus Clippers. I mean, first off, like, I don't have, I have no idea what's up with Kawhi. And they're being really hush hush, which you have to with Kobe with Chris Paul. 
They both appear to be, well, we know Kawhi's out tonight. CP3 is listed as out, but with COVID, like, that can actually change. So I'm assuming he's out tonight, but let's just pretend that Chris Paul comes back for game three and Kawhi's out for the series. Like, do you give the Clippers a chance here? Yeah, I do. And for me, you know, the Suns are still favorites, but I think it's kind of become, not clear, but maybe a trend that Paul George, well, He's not good enough to be the guy on like a championship winning team. He's much more comfortable being the guy. And like his number, he's been very good since Kawhi's been out. And it seems like their offense has been very good. Not saying they're a better team without Kawhi, but they haven't like taken a major step back, in my opinion. And I give them, especially with Chris Paul out again, a good shot to win this game. I, I agree. That being said, guys. Let's start talking about the actual points that we're looking for in sports battle, and this will give you a better idea of what we think these individual players will do tonight. So I expect the Suns to win tonight, but I also expect it to be a game. And the Clippers were in that game all game till the very end, but they were insane from three-point range. So it is possible they take a dip today. It's possible that Devin Booker becomes a little bit more human, but I don't expect that. It's crazy. Like, I'm thinking about this. The favorites for the NBA Finals right now are the Suns and Bucks. Remember, like, last year, the Suns, like, played the Bucks like, with Giannis out? Suns were, like, the worst team in the NBA. Now, they're, like, they're the favorites to be in the NBA Finals. That's crazy, man. Side note to that, the Suns beat the Bucks twice this year, but both games came down to the last second, and they were two of the best basketball games of the regular season. So if that's the way it pairs out, we could be in for a treat right now. Yeah, I feel like Milwaukee's got to win the got to win the finals this year. They just got a good path to do so. Um, they got to make the finals. If you lose to Atlanta, that's a terrible look. Uh, if you lose to the Suns or the Clippers at full strength, I think you can be happy with the step. I mean, not satisfied, but I mean, I heard I was tweeting back and forth to somebody as yesterday. Like, if the Bucks lose, they got to blow it up, and I'm like, that just doesn't make sense. I disagree with what that. What are you What are you getting? Like, who? What are you going to get? In a, as an improvement off of Middleton and Drew. Like, I had a buddy I used to work with be like, the Bucks need to be all in on getting a Dame Willard. I've said for oh. years, Damian Lillard's the perfect compliment to Giannis. We have no way to get him, though. I'll say this. I think that right now, at least for me, Milwaukee's the favorite to win the title. So I, agree. I don't think they should blow it up if they lose, but I do think it would be they'd let one slip through their fingers if they don't. I agree with that. I just, when you say blow it up, I'm like, I don't know where you think they're going to go. You just blow it up to blow it up. Like, this is Milwaukee. This isn't Brooklyn. This isn't Miami. This isn't LA. You're not getting free agents. This is about as good as you're going to do. You do your best to improve the role players. Uh, if anything, you would have thought that maybe a new coach would have been that, but it sounds like Budenholzer secured his spot with the win over the net. So you run it back. You hope you do better, but you don't have like LeBron James. Uh, Kevin Durant, like guys like that aren't coming to Milwaukee. So like, I don't know where you think you're going to improve. It'd be great to get Bradley Beal, but sure. Like where are you, what assets do you have to get him? You don't, you have no assets. Yeah. I don't even, I'm not even speaking about that. I'm just talking about like, you know what I mean? Like they should win it in my opinion. Not that like they have to win it. And they're just not even going to be facing a team like, like the Lakers with LeBron where they'd be an underdog in the series. Like I think that they will be a favorite against whoever they play from the West. I agree, but if it's a full-strength Phoenix Suns, I think you got yourself the seven-game series right there, and I think it's going to be really, really good and competitive. And whoever wins, whether it's CP3 and Booker or Giannis and Middleton, be happy for them. Uh, obviously, I won't be happy if the Bucks lose, but I do like the Suns. Like, team, I still so. can't get out of my head. Like the Milwaukee's been this team for like a few years and have been waiting for this moment. Phoenix was like the worst team in the league a couple years ago. I mean, even last year they were not good. So I still am not buying that. Like. They're as good as like the Milwaukee's of the world. I heard a great breakdown of them yesterday and I liked it. And it was in the, in the age of now positionless basketball, they're a little bit of a throwback. One, they can get you at the mid range. You got two guards who are deadly in the mid range. Players know their roles. You have a big man in Aiton who likes to be by the basket and doesn't mind playing like a big man. You got two athletic wings that can do you up in Crowder and Mikal Bridges. Mikal Bridges being the young up and comer. You got Jay Crowder as the Wiley veteran. And then you have a legit actual point guard and an actual shooting guard who knows his role. Like they are, they have chemistry, they have late game chemistry, and they shoot free throws better than anybody in the league. Yeah, I mentioned that earlier in the year, and it's hold, it's held up nicely. I will say this though: talk about getting a nice draw. I mean, Lakers, no AD, basically, Bron hurt. Next round, no Jamal Murray. I mean, now maybe no Kawhi Leonard. And I still think the Clippers are very live in this series. I mean, tonight's oh. a game, but. The Clippers are good. They're not – I don't know. It's funny. 
last year at the beginning of the part of the year, they were so good. They were even better than the Lakers. Remember for a long time, I know a lot of people had them as their finals favorite. And then they fell like they fell off. They lost in the playoffs and they haven't ever been that good this year, but they're still a good team. They are. I mean, there's a, it's an interesting thing. Cause I still don't know what the deal is with Kawhi for all I know. He's out permanently, like for months right. or he could be back in game three. Like they are so hush hush, which makes sense. Uh, also like Reggie Jackson's going to come back to earth eventually. Right. He's not going to play like this forever. Agreed. All right. That being said, guys, we're here to talk sports battle. hundred percent deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Um, get your hundred bucks in here. You guys got iPhones. You got Google, uh, iPhones or Androids. You can go to Google play. You can go to the app store. You can download the app. Get on it. Get your money in. Um, we've talked about the scoring breakdown. It's almost a spitting image of DraftKings with a couple of mini, minor, tiny differences. And you can check those out by downloading the app. And then there is attack mode versus defense mode, which are very, very aptly named. And what I mean by that is defense mode is a little bit more for defensive players like myself. Attack mode is a little bit more for your aggressive players like you. They can also be slate dependent. If you got five picks that you love, and I mean you love them, go for it, man. Get your money in where you fit in. If you are a little more wishy-washy but want to have some skin in the game, go play the defense mode for the day. Yeah, exciting stuff. There's a bunch of different ways to skin the cat, if you will. And I'm excited to talk over this game with you. So let's start. We're going to go with the overall fantasy scores. First guy up, Book. Book dropped 77.75 in game one. Um you know, I had him as the play of the day, but that was, you know, chalk for a reason, right? It just made sense that day with no Chris Paul. Uh, I expect him to dip on his overall fantasy performance today, but I still expect him to uh, exceed the 53.59. If I had to put the over-under score, I'd be a little bit closer to 60. Uh, he did a great job of breaking the double teams when they trapped him last game. Uh, I like the intangibles of Devin Booker. I know people have been calling him the new Kobe the last couple of days. While that might be a bit aggressive, he does have some of that, you know, quote unquote, mama mentality where he likes, he has dog in this fight. And so I like him here today to go over the 53.59. He'll dip from 78, but I still expect him to be closer to 60 because I do expect a 30 point triple double with the assists. And if he, you know, he's got double digit yeah. rebounds in like three of the last four games. Just expecting 30-point triple-doubles. Wow. No, no, no. Double-double. I don't expect him to get the rebounds again. Okay. All right. Uh, cool. Uh, I'm with you, man. Like, yeah. And, uh, you know, I've always been a huge Booker fan. I know you had too. You called last year, the year before, like, him potentially winning an MVP. And now we're seeing. That's why. He is definitely showing why. He's playing every bit like it right now, especially with Chris Paul out. How do you not like the over here? All right. Uh, next up, we got Paul George, who – I like Booker over George on pay sites, but I don't expect, you know, I've, again, I've been extremely hard on Paul George and he's earned a lot of that, but he has played wonderfully for the majority of his playoffs, uh, especially in the absence of Kawhi Leonard. I do think this projected score here is just right. And I'm going to take the over, but not with anywhere near the confidence that I'm taking the over of Devin Booker. Yeah, uh, I'm taking the over on Paul George, too. I am kind of worried, though, the more I look at like this series, that the Suns just might roll the Clippers with no Kawhi. The Suns are good. Yeah. I, I, they are a complete team. They have everything that I think that you need. And again, it is a little bit more old school in, you know, in the traditional sense that they, they have roles. And this is why they're so comfortable. They don't load manage. They play their guys. Everybody knows their job in this situation. And... While if Chris Paul never comes back, that's going to ultimately be a hindrance to him. I think they got another get-up spot again right here. And again, uh, the Clippers have played well without Kawhi Leonard, but eventually Reggie Jackson isn't going to drop 30 points every game. No, and it's, it's interesting. The Suns don't have like a dominant wing, which we've seen win titles recently, LeBron, KD. And yeah, they've done it kind of an old-school way. Yeah, it depends. I guess Booker's like he has to play point tonight a lot, but... He's kind of a wing guy, right? He scores like a wing. I wouldn't call him like a like a LeBron or, I mean, I don't know. Like, yeah, he, the Booker is that guy for them, no doubt about it. Um, yeah. And he's becoming even more that guy as they keep winning. Yeah, so uh, you're going to go over on the George? Yeah, for sure. I think it's it's all about the stars in the playoffs. Give me overs on both these guys. All right, next up, DeAndre. I want to tell sports battle that they did a great job today 
marking these fantasy scores. The only one that I have a big argument with is Booker. Uh, I would have gone a little higher on him to really make people think about it. Um, but I think they nailed like every other one to the point that I'm going to, I'm going to be wishy-washy on a bunch of these. And it moves right down here to DeAndre Ayton, who, again, I'm going to take the over right here. I'm going to project him to get a few more rebounds, and maybe they don't bounce to Booker this time around. But, it, like, if I had to ask me, like, I'm projecting for, like, 37 points. So, like, it is close. Very close. Um, man, I, I'm going to take the over at home. Just that does it for me. That's the tiebreaker at home. That's a great point for the home for the uh, tiebreaker right here. I expect it to be a game. I expect him to see his minutes. If you feel like this game's a blowout, then take the you know take the unders everywhere. But I expect a good game. And again, I'm wishy washy on it, so I'll take the home court right there as well. Sweet. All right. Next up, Reggie Jackson, who I've talked about repeatedly coming back to earth uh, over this this show. But I have been so impressed by Reggie Jackson. This I didn't see this coming in a million years. He is playing huge minutes. Uh, he's making his wide open threes. He's creating shots for other people. He's been sensational. So I'm gonna give him credit here again and take the over on him. I like these two teams to play offense against one another. Um, I, I can see him tanking. I, I know he's got a really bad game coming, but he's done enough that I have faith in him right now to hit the over here. Yeah, I kind of do too. Uh, I, I like the offense in this game as well, and I like being on the trend of like taking overs because I think if one guy gets there, you know. Not that it's necessarily going to be the other guys get there, but in a high-scoring game, it's more likely that more of them get there. I actually am going to have five overs and one under in this one because we're going to move over to campaign. Um, I'm also going to take the over on him. So I was looking at him this morning, trying to figure out how aggressively I wanted to play him, and I forgot that he lost good run last game because he had, all, he had some foul issues, which is not what I'm going to anticipate here today. And while Chris Paul missed some of those other games earlier, this postseason, he was just nothing short of sensational. Uh, this is another guy, and he's we've talked about him on DFS for years, but he's proven a lot to me throughout this postseason as well. So kudos to him. I'm gonna take him with a subtle over here as well. This is a tough one for me. I am gonna take over as well, though. Again, home at home gives me the extra boost. So give me the over here, even though I think he scores around 35. Yeah. Okay. And the last guy, Marcus Morris, is the only guy I'm going to go under on. And it just has to matter to do with his health. He's supposed to play tonight. He's not listed on the injury report, but he was clearly hurt last game. Hence the reason you didn't see him in the second half, really. Um, they have enough other players on the Clippers, whether you're talking about Luke Kennard, Terrence Mann, Rajon Rondo. They even went big for a while with Zubach and Cousins last game that I don't think Morris is going to play major minutes tonight. Uh, they might save him for game three, hopefully. You know, since they're best down 0-2 apparently anyway. So this, for me, this is just health. And I know he's good enough to get the over on this one easily, but he just did not seem like himself. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to ride with you there. Give me the under here as well, and I'm going to trust you. Yeah, and, and I'm trusting what I heard. So it's like a game of telephone, right? Somebody's telling yeah. somebody who's telling somebody who's telling somebody who I heard who I'm telling you. So I'm going to ride with the health not being good enough to give you major production today. But I'm a Marcus Morris fan, as you know. So if I'm wrong here... Again, I I will not be surprised if I'm mistaken on this one. And I love uh, the game of telephone, so I'm with it. <laughs> yeah, I haven't played that one in a hot minute, but there you go, guys. So, again, the name of the app is Sports Battle. 100% deposit match up to $100. Clearly, we hadn't talked to NBA in a while as we had a little exciting and fun time talking this one. So, uh, before we hop off here, Bucks and how many? And who do you got winning the Western Conference? I do think everyone's kind of just like poo-pooing that Atlanta has no chance. Uh, they're probably not going to win the series, but I don't think Milwaukee's like that impressive either. Like that's the well, thing. I only said that because you basically said you thought the Bucs were going to win, and I know you got I, them in a futures bet, so you're going to ride it there. I but did. I also, if you happen to see, I made a Facebook comment because I posted about the Bucs, and then I think our boy Monks, thanks for the tip again today, Monks. Shout out to you. You're a great customer. Um he said, you got to love, you know, what's going on with Milwaukee, where you're at. And I'm like, I do. But I don't want to poo-poo Atlanta, who has shown me a lot throughout this postseason. And I don't think Atlanta's going to make it easy on us. But we're a bad matchup for them with our size and our athleticism. And the fact that you can put Drew Holiday on Trey Young the entire series and just make his life really, really difficult. And Bogdanovich is clearly hurt. Yeah, agreed. Milwaukee should definitely win the series. They just beat Brooklyn. But, like, 
I don't think Milwaukee is like, you know, the best team in the world either, but they will win the series and they probably will do so rather easily. And I'm going to say they do so in five games. Okay. I, I've got them in five as well, but I'm not going to be flabbergasted at all. If they push it to seven again, I am, I have slowly and steadily become a bigger fan of Atlanta. And part of it is I'm a big fan of coach McMillan. I think this guy, I mean, Indiana made a mistake, a huge mistake by getting rid of him. Yeah, He got the best out of a, he turned on a slightly above average roster into a really good basketball team. And we saw how great they were defensively and what a joke they were on the stretch. And part of that oh, was missing Turner and missing some other guys, but they turned into a joke defensively and, that was a to me a catastrophic mistake by the Indiana Pacers. Hundred percent agreed. So they've so already I, fired their coach. What's that? They've already fired their coach. Yeah, man. What did you expect? I know you got swept by Miami, but Miami put the hurting on a lot of people in the bubble last year, and you didn't even have some bonus. Like, what did you think right. was going to happen? And now you, the guy you hired, you already fired. Like, wow! It just that makes no sense. What an idi- What an idiotic move. It, it feels like it's somebody, it's like a, a relationship where the man or the woman came home and they were just having a bad day and they were probably, you know, punching above their weight class for a long time with their significant other. And on a bad day, they got rid of them. And then a year later, like, holy cow, what did I do? That person was way too good for me. I had a couple drinks and made a snap decision. Now here I am dealing with whatever riffraff I can try to find myself to get into. And there they are ha- happier than they were before. No doubt about that. So what you're doing guys and ladies all right got anything else to throw in that's all i got all right good luck today everybody um lots of sports still rolling heavy on the nba uh and no matter what happens for the remainder of the nba playoffs it is cool that somebody new is winning to chip this year man we've uh, i love lebron but we've seen enough of it we've seen enough of the golden state warriors somebody new is going to be in there that's pretty cool yeah it is pretty cool uh whether it's Giannis getting in ring Freaking Chris Paul finally getting there. I mean, Paul George or Kawhi, Trey Young. Like, I mean, whoever wins it, it's going to be, I mean, improve their legacy like forever, obviously. I mean. Well, I mentioned like Kawhi's got his ring, so it's not a big deal for him by comparison. But the fact that like you said, well, the flip side of that is the Clippers. Like the Clippers have been one of the more pathetic franchises in sports history. And while I'm not a Clippers fan, I always enjoy when like a no name type of franchise like that, like something get something, you know, you get something to build upon or whatever you want to call it. And, and, you know, for both Clippers fans out there, they've had this coming for a long time. And now, like not even about like Kawhi, because he's hurt. Like if they get it done now, if Paul George is their main guy, I mean, that, that will, that, what's that do for Paul George? I mean, yeah, it, it's going to be a really fun rest of the playoffs for sure. You know, oddly, Trey Young has the least to gain out of, uh, like, let's say if it's Paul George with no Kawhi, Chris Paul, or Giannis, I still think Trey Young has the least amount to gain because if the Hawks win it, I still think everybody's going to look at it as a fluke. You're probably right that everyone will look at it as a fluke. Not saying that he doesn't deserve that. I'm just saying, like, I think that's how people would view it. I don't disagree with you. Um, it's a good point. Yeah, I have no direct arguments, although he will have won it. So I it just, agree. It's hard to imagine him. We talked about this like last week. It's still hard to imagine them winning it, I think is the thing. Well, it's huge for Giannis because, I mean, for just so many obvious reasons. It's huge for Chris Paul. I mean, for you know a wily 15-year veteran like this to take it. And if Paul George were to win the chip this year without Kawhi, I mean, you have to think about how that guy's been raked through the coals. Like, right. yeah, it's one thing for like a no-name guy like me who's you know got a few thousand <laughs> you know YouTube subscribers, but like just through the national media, what this guy's had to deal with. If he were to put the Clippers on his back and win a chip this year, I don't know that anybody would have changed the narrative on themselves so quickly, and he would deserve Agreed. all the credit in the world. Yes, that I agree with that. I don't. It'll be the quickest narrative turnaround I've ever seen. I mean. Oof, I, I, it's hard to even fathom because we still don't know what's up with Kawhi. And if Kawhi comes back, it's still Kawhi's team, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. So you know, it, I was going to say this about Trey Young. I kind of with you that winning a title isn't going to be like 
uh, like world breaking for him, but just doing what he's done already has ended like the, Oh, the Mavericks robbed the Hawks and Luca for Trey young. Like you'd still rather, rather have Luca. I mean, people would still rather have Luca, but Trey young is like on that level. Like he's on the John Morant level. They do it differently, but clearly he is. I mean, he's the only one that's in the conference finals. Even if they lose in five to Milwaukee, because they are huge underdogs, right? Yeah. Like, I, I still think he's done a ton for his NBA credibility in this postseason, no doubt about yeah, it. For sure. See, and I, I'm, I'm with you. Like, I, I can't fathom the Hawks winning the chip. Like, even if they beat my Bucks, like, I, I just can't picture them beating the Suns or the Clippers. I can't see it. I mean, anything can happen. I just can't see it. Yeah, I agree. It's, uh, it would be remarkable. I'm with you. Oh, anyways. All right. Fun to talk. Y'all have good luck tonight. Go win yourself some money, and we will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks, guys.